Hardware Components Used in Communication Systems, Part 4, Mobile Phones and Bluetooth Devices. Now, essentially, I've paired these two together because these are technologies that we are using a lot of the time. Okay, they are two very current technologies that are free to use in exams that you do use like very broadly all over the place and just because you use them day to day doesn't mean they don't make great answers in exams. So firstly we will look at the mobile phone okay and really the mobile phone is a fantastic device because it's a multi-purpose device essentially every app gives your phone different functionality they're not just used for phone calls these days. They're used for sending SMS messages. You can check the weather or be updated on anything you're subscribed to if it has an app. They are multimedia devices capable of displaying music, videos, and also playing games on them. So understand the mobile phone just can do a whole variety of different things. And really, if the software can be written for it, it's capable of doing almost anything, okay, in relation to an information system, okay? We got to understand that the mobile phone on a network level, if we are thinking communication systems, can access networks in different ways. So the first one we need to understand is being that it is a mobile phone, it accesses a cellular network. And that cellular network is the one that is put out through a provider such as Telstra or Optus here in Australia. And they allow you to make phone calls and connect to their network okay, to access their cellular network. These days as well though, they're not just giving us a cellular network for phone calls, but they're giving us data plans as well. Okay, so the 3G and 4G networks, that mean no matter where I am geographically, nowhere near a router or anything, okay, I can still connect to the internet through 3G and 4G technologies. Okay, now that relates to Wi-Fi, which is the second way a mobile phone accesses network. Okay, so they connect either through Wi-Fi. Now, if I'm in my home, I can connect to my home Wi-Fi. If I'm out, as previously said um, in the most recent video, okay, I can connect to wireless access points available in cafes or at um, business sites that allow me just to connect to their networks and I can use the internet there. Okay, so basically we can connect as well on our mobile phone through Wi-Fi points. The third technology, which is what we're going to talk about on the next slide, is Bluetooth. Okay, mobile phones can also connect with devices such as headsets and speakers and computers, um, car multimedia systems through Bluetooth technology. And let's take a look as essentially what Bluetooth is. So on this next slide here, okay, Bluetooth enables devices to, within short range, connect to each other. It does this by setting up small little networks known as PicoNets, okay? And these PicoNets are short, and it's, as you can see here, it says ad hoc. That means on the spot, you can set them up spontaneously, okay? Networks, okay? So the PicoNet is key here, okay? Basically, as devices become within vicinity of each other, okay, they recognize each other. Now, the first time two devices recognize each other and I want to connect them, I usually have to enter in a verification code, and then they, once that's done, they establish their connection, they set up their parameters, and they network with each other. The next time those two devices meet, I don't have to do any of that. They remember the data about each other. So for example, if I'm talking about my headset, okay, that I use when I play music on my computer, okay, the first time I'll have to actually set up my headset, install some software, and so it knows that my headset, okay, can communicate with my computer. I can listen to music off the computer without any wires being required. The next time I put my headset on, I don't have to do any of that. As soon as I've turned the headset on, my computer knows, provided that the Bluetooth is on on my computer, Okay, that I'm wearing the headset and sound will come through my headset without any setting up. And that's the convenience of Bluetooth. Once devices are paired, and that's the term we use, pairing of devices, okay, they then will obviously connect to each other when they are in vicinity of each other. Now, a whole range of peripheral devices can be connected through Bluetooth. We've got wireless mice, wireless keyboards, speakers, printers, Okay, and they can all be wirelessly connected to my computer system. They can all also be connected wirelessly to my mobile phone, as discussed on the previous slide. The fundamental strength of Bluetooth wireless technology is the ability to simultaneously handle data and voice transmissions. Okay, audio okay, obviously has a larger file size too. So the fact that it can really streamline audio so well, remember we've, we've been talking about headsets this whole time, but a lot of you are using wireless headsets and now we've even got the wireless e-pods as well. Okay, that obviously are distributing audio data to two locations at once. Okay, one for the left ear pod and one for the right ear pod. 
okay it is a very powerful technology okay and Bluetooth being able to uh, set up its Pico net okay and allow multiple devices to communicate with each other as long as within range of each other is a fantastic technology that is used all over the place so I hope this video has helped you understand these two technologies of mobile phones and Bluetooth how you use them all the time already and try to think where you do use them in real life already because that will enable you to incorporate them into your exam answers and write really well thought out and practical exam answers based on your own experience. You don't get to have experience much with uh, te technology, obviously in the wider um, industry. But so think of the things that you do use, okay? And these are things out of the old IPT course. So give them a crack when they do come to your exams.